Adding some retry mechanisms in your API calls is highly recommended, but there's a lot of nuances involved in it. At first glance, it might sound simple. If the call fails, just try again. But to do it well, you need more than just a loop. You need to understand why API calls fail in the first place in order to implement a retry logic that actually helps instead of making things worse. Most of the time, API calls fail not because something is fundamentally broken. It's usually because of transient errors, temporary issues that often fix themselves. A hiccup in the network, a slow DNS resolution, or a momentary spike in server traffic. These aren't permanent problems, they're blips, and when you encounter them, Retrying can save the day, making it look like the disruption never happened. But retrying only helps when it's done intelligently. Not every failed call needs to be retried, and not every retry should happen immediately. That's where the retrying logic comes in. To make it work well, you need to think through a few key things. The first is when to retry, also known as your retry logic. You typically want to retry when you get back certain HTTP status codes. A classic example is a 500, a generic server error. That often means something went wrong on the other end and retrying might work. Sometimes you'll also retry on specific 400 errors like 429s, too many requests which indicates rate limiting. In this case, retrying after a delay is exactly what the server is asking you to do. But like I said, not all errors need to be retried. For example, a 404 not found usually means the resource doesn't exist or a 401 unauthorized means there's some sort of problems with credentials. Retrying most likely won't fix this, so your logic needs to know which errors are worth retrying. The second thing to consider is how long to wait before retrying again, also known as your delay strategy. If you retry too quickly, especially during high traffic moments, you might just be adding pressure to an already stressed system. That's why you add some sort of delay between attempts. The simplest approach is a fixed delay, retry every few seconds. A smarter approach is incremental delay, increase the wait time by a set amount after each attempt. And the most common approach in production systems is exponential backoff. Double the delay after every retry attempt. You might even add jitter, a bit of randomness to prevent a bunch of clients from retrying in sync and causing a spike. The final strategy to consider is how many times to retry, also known as your retry limit. This is important. You don't want to retry forever. That's just wasting resources and can make the problem a lot worse. You need to set a retry limit, a maximum number of attempts before giving up and alerting. If it's a critical operation, you might want to retry more. If it's something low stakes, maybe you retry less or not at all. The good news is you don't always have to implement this from scratch. Many HTTP clients and SDKs already have retry logic built in. You just configure the rules, what errors to retry on, how long to wait, and how many times to try, and they handle the rest. Still, it's important to understand how this works, because in some cases, especially in more complex systems, you might need to write custom retry logic, and when that time comes, you'll know exactly where to start. Follow Umacodes for more programming videos like this.